I swear to God, if Dean says, do you want your soul back one more time, I'm going to reach through the TV and slap him. Episode's actually pretty good, though. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 10 of Supernatural Season 6, Caged Heat, and this is one of my favorite Castiel episodes. He's got a pretty good line in this one, can't deny that. This is the episode where Sam and Dean eventually get tired of Crowley's shit, and they decide to turn the games against him and go after Crowley at his home turf, his home base, with the help of Castiel and sort of the begrudging help of Grandpa, as well as Meg. And Castiel and Meg. Well, we all know what we're going to talk about in this episode, so let's get that over with. These two have one of the best lines, best scenes in this entire episode, held this entire season. A really good build-up to a really good joke. When Sam and Dean and Castiel are at the weird hovel house that doesn't have a side of its wall, but it apparently still has electricity and cable of some sort. Castiel's watching porn, and he says, You know what, I'm just going to put the clip in. Very complex. Mm hmm. If the pizza man truly loves this babysitter, why does he keep slapping her rear? Perhaps she's done something wrong. I can actually recall when I was watching this episode live that I went on Facebook and I made a comment about if the pizza man loves her, why does he hit her rear? Being one of my favorite Castiel lines of all time. And then about 20 minutes later, I would correct that with my new favorite line being... What was that? I learned that from the pizza man. Castiel's really funny in this episode. The humor is spot on, and the entire drama slash action of this episode is really good. There's a lot of nail-biting moments. There's a lot of tension. There's some cool mysteries. And while the mystery of Sam's soul is kind of put into a dead rut, there are some cool twists in this episode. There's a eh, okay portrayal. And the ending is really, really climactic, especially with what happens, or at least what you think happens to Crowley. That doesn't mean that this episode isn't void of issues. Within the first to hell, not even the first two minutes, the first minute of this episode, I had to pause it because Dean mentioned, do you even want your soul back for the upteenth time to where I think it gave me a headache today. Dean is becoming more of the man baby child that we've always kind of known him to be, but to the point where he is near on insufferable. And then there is the betrayal from grandpa, which they are reaching. They are reaching so far with this storyline that even you as a casual fan can see just how stupid this story aspect is. The fact that Grandpa wants his daughter back only because he's back. There isn't any kind of unnatural feeling as to why he should be back. The, the whole idea of bringing Grandpa back, I have a thought. I can't confirm it, of course, and probably you guys would be able to confirm this for me in the comments. That they maybe wanted to try and bring Jeffrey Dean Morgan back are someone in capacity but they couldn't so they went with a x-files slash technically speaking show alumni to try and fill in the gaps that they had to deal with considering f the whole fallacy of trying to follow season five but aside from this really weak as shit aspect i'm not supposed to talk about it everything else about this episode is great the action's great Meg is fantastic, Castiel is really good, I love how Sam gets out of his room by biting his wrist, and let's be honest, Soulless Sam is the best hunter that this show ever has, he is a ruthless killing machine. Also brings up the very reasonable counter argument of not wanting a soul back that his soul has been in the cage with the Lucifer and Michael for a year and well as we found out time in hell certainly moves a little bit slower than that of reality so Sam's probably a mushy gushy gush. The idea of trying to put that back into Sam is so f weak in terms of a story aspect that while Dean is trying to whine about it as best he can, it is so easy for the writers to counter their own plot ideal to the point where you as the viewer are like, yeah, fuck that. Why would you want his soul back? Sure, Soul of Sam is weird, but the only one really complaining about him is Dean and everyone else now that we have made it clear that Sam has no soul. Even though over the five episodes previous, not a single mention of it, just some little bit suspicions. Now that we know he has no soul, 
Gotta mention it, gotta mention it, gotta mention it. I do like how it ends because while we have seen the split of the brothers happen many a times, this one makes sense. If anything of all the times that these two would ever split up post season five, this is one of the strongest reasons. Because honestly, Sam has a very good point. Why the fuck would you want this back in you? So aside from Dean's whininess and the weak as shit grandpa split slash betrayal storyline going on, I really do like this episode, so I'm going to give it a 6 out of 7. It's fairly enjoyable, it's got one of the best jokes in the entire season, literally. It is so fucking good, I quote it to this day. It was there. But let's see what you guys have to say about this episode. I imagine y'all are going to say the same thing. This is what you boys do, sit around watching pornos with angels? This is my second favorite episode of the season. Just add Meg and you instantly have me hooked. This is how you do a good supernatural episode that focuses on the main plot and is also so much fun. I love the characters, but my standouts have to be Castiel and Meg. Rachel Miner is just amazing as Meg, and she and, Ma and Misha have great chemistry. Even though I don't like romance in shows, if there is one exception to the rule, it's that opposite attract. It's why Destiel doesn't work, and why I guess I am a Meg Steel fan. Oh man, these acronyms. Uh, in truth, their relationship probably brings up Castiel's second favorite moment in the series with the Pizza Man. I burst out laughing the first time I watched this. Also, freaking Crowley, man. Mark Trapper kills it in this role. I have. My problem is with season six, but these episodes are really fun. This one is definitely the kind of the flipping of the switch, and we're going to get into a lot better episodes as we go on. KHT has always felt like a traditional episode you can get from the Kripke era. It has drama, humor, action, and most importantly, the horror element. Carly's apparent death comes out as a surprise. However, as at least we see Dean offering to help Castiel in the Civil War after they felt like they didn't really want to work for demons anymore and have to find out another way to get Solm's, uh, Sam's soul back. Probably one of my favorite quotes in this episode and overall mythology of the, of the show has always been before from Soulless Sam, when angels and demons agree on something, call me nuts, I'd pay attention. <laughs> that is a good one. KHD is a great episode. I really loved Rachel Miner as Meg here. She's such a badass. And I'm surprised I enjoyed Soulless Sam. Glad to see Castiel. It's interesting to see him make have a makeout section with Meg. Episode-wise, KHT is just okay. The writing isn't anything special and the directing is heavy-handed. However, I enjoy the episode because of some of the actors' performances. Misha and Rachel have some great chemistry, some fun and zip that makes the episode memorable. Thanks to them, there will always be the Pizza Man episode. Mark Shepard clearly had fun as both Crowley and the Alpha Shapeshifter. Not often you get to torture yourself. Two niggling questions from the episode, though. One is how did Sam get the Devil's Trap on the ceiling? Sure, Sam's a moose, but that was a high, high ceiling. He's not that tall which actually that's a good point maybe there was a box or something but yeah no flicking the blood up at the ceiling and two did they ever explain how Crowley and Castiel pulled off the burning bones illusion Crowley's death looks pretty darn final without any remain anything remaining to even attempt resurrecting I have a feeling it's just a flash like it's some sort of illusion that they're both contracting on yes yeah, sure they don't explain it but the fact that they're working together later on, as we will find out eventually, I feel that is a, a reasonable, unexplained thing. But I get where you're coming from there. KHT is a great episode. The abundance of great moments is what makes this episode memorable, starting with the opener, where Crowley is torturing a shapeshifter, Meg's return, Cass's hilarious discover pornography for the first time, and the chemistry between Meg and him, Sam saving Dean from the ghouls, the argument between Dean and Samuel, as well as the funny scene where the demon from the beginning says, I can't understand what you're saying because I don't speak, little bitch. That definitely was a showing of the show in its times. I've always found that they said bitch quite a bit back in the earlier days and whatnot. All right, guys, now we're heading on to episode 11 of Supernatural Season 6. Make sure to give you guys your thoughts about that episode in the comments below, and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, guys, thank you for following me along. We're now going to be heading into the halfway mark for Season 6. Sorry if I've been grudging, but it has been a little bit of a rough road trying to watch this season. It's kind of bizarre to watch a season still have the same really high production value that we were used to from Season 5, where the writing is just lacking and it's not even like on a dab level it's just a very ill-constructed very weak and very brittle attempt at trying to keep you focused to keep you engaged in these stories but either way if you guys like the video leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe i'll see you guys next week thanks for watching the video my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.